Hey everybody, today we're going to take a look at Assage and so many of you reached out to us and we have now 420 teams all over NATO partners using it and trying it out. But we know you have questions so we wanted to show you a little bit of uh, insights both on how to register, use it and kind of the pitfalls and things to pay attention to. Alright, so first here, if you go to chat.asksage.ai, you'll be able to go to this page and uh, create an account. The first thing you do, uh, you click to register, and all you got to do is uh, provide your first name, last name, company, email, uh, password, and the country. Uh, you need to read our terms and conditions and submit uh, your, your account. You're going to get then uh, a code in your email. It might be in your spam, so check that out. And with that code, you'll be able to go to the next step and uh, validate your email and then log in. If you don't get the email, uh, feel free to reach out to us at uh, support at asksage.ai. We'll be able to uh, force the validation on your email. All right, so once you validate your email, you'll be able to, to log in and get access to the interface. All you're going to see effectively is... Uh, uh, the chat uh, in the center here and a, a bunch of different uh, uh, conversations that you can create here. Uh, effectively, keep in mind that uh, uh, Sage only remembers about five uh, messages uh, of history. That's it. Um, so it's not going to remember your entire conversations. That would take too much prompt. So we summarize it and we reduce it. So you're not going to have your entire history, but it's going to remember some stuff. So if you want to have a new conversation, let's say you want to start coding and you were talking about uh, maybe uh, writing your next LinkedIn post, you want to open a different chat and click on new chat to be able to start fresh. Also here you see the new button that's going to tell you all the new stuff we just released and the stuff we're working on. As you can see, we just released this new command slash learn with your contents there after. Uh, so let's say you want to uh, teach the bot that, uh, uh, you know, Nick Chillon is the best in the world uh, to code. Uh, obviously, that's not true, but you could. So you could type slash learn Nick Chillon is the best at coding. And then the bot will know that, but it's only to you, so it's not going to be impacting uh, someone else's results, okay? Uh, that being said, we're going to plan on also sharing data sets between people, so you're going to be able to share with your team and your group. But keep in mind, we also have uh, customized data sets. So um, let's say you want to have access to Chinese intelligence. We have a data set for that, so we can grant access to pay per use uh, data sets, so you can... Uh, uh, pay a monthly fee uh, per uh, user and get access to customized uh, data set as well. And of course, we'll talk about data ingestion uh, in this video as well. So you know how potentially we can ingest data for you based on uh, kind of your mission and what you're trying to achieve. Now, of course, uh, uh, here you see you can clear the chat. You can look at the different history. Uh, you can also uh, uh, simply type your question. Keep in mind, uh, it's very well known that uh, uh, <coughs> DaVinci, the, the model we use from OpenAI behind uh, Assage, is uh, uh, biased and also, uh, unfortunately, can have what we call hallucinations. So keep in mind, it's going to be able to pretend uh, sometimes to know something when it doesn't. Or it's also uh, sometimes going to uh, say he can do things that he can't. For example, someone was trying to have... Uh, Sage send emails. It can do that. It can only chat and text. It cannot also uh, go and grab content online. We can't do that. Obviously, it's a massive cyber risk. We have a way to ingest data into uh, the memory of Sage. Keep in mind uh, that we can do that. We've done it with uh, YouTube video scripts. We've done it with uh, data sets, structured, unstructured data, uh, JSON, XML. Uh, we've done it with uh, PDFs and so on. So it's doable, but it's something we do. Uh, and now you can do that also with a slash learn command, but just with plain text. Uh, that's it. We're going to be working on uh, customized things. Let's say you want to ingest a website and stuff like that. But it's, it creates a lot of complexity, right? Because we want to we want to only ingest and index the relevant data. So we don't want all the noise, all the stuff around it. Uh, we want to only remove really the, the, the chrome jewel of the data and uh, label it and do it right. So we can help you do that or you can do it. Uh, but we're going to be working on giving you more tools to be able to also uh, do that on your own. But right now, you have to go uh, talk to us to be able to do that. So keep in mind, if you ask something about someone that Sage does not know, it's possible it's going to say, I don't know, but sometimes it's going to make things up. 
if you ask sometimes uh, uh, a specific name, he could just say he's a CEO of Assage LLC, and it's obviously not true. So always trust but verify. Don't just believe the answer plenty of times is going to be just wrong. So when you create an account, what you get is effectively a limit of 50,000 tokens. Uh, that's just for the free account. Of course, you can get more tokens by paying or, or reaching out to us for a specific use case. That's how much you can query. That's both the prompt, the question, and the answer. But keep in mind, we add to the prompt. So let's say you ask about a DoD policy. We're going to pass additional knowledge that you don't see to the prompt. So your prompt might be much more than just simple question you just asked. So keep in mind that uh, your prompt is often going to be maybe 2000 tokens. And then the answer might only be, you know, one sentence or 10 sentences. But either way, the prompt will be much larger than what you see. Now, of course, also in the uh, free account, we limited how much you can teach the bot uh, with 500,000 tokens. Uh, so that's how much you can educate and uh, teach custom data to the bot. Of course, we can uh, do more, and so you can reach out to us for that as well. But that's the limitation of the free account. And we don't know how long we're going to keep it free, honestly, because that costs us money. Uh, very likely, you're going to have to pay a monthly fee to even get any access uh, to Sage. So unfortunately, as you can see, sometimes when you ask a question uh, to, to OpenAI because of the success of OpenAI APIs and the volume of people asking questions, it could take uh, a few seconds. So unfortunately, there's nothing we can do. Uh, you're just going to have to be patient. Hopefully, OpenAI is going to increase their throughput. Um, we really can't do anything, but just wait. It's going to take, you know, two, three, four, five seconds, and then you're going to be able to get the answer. So when you type a prompt, uh, obviously uh, English majors will do a great job at asking the right question the right way. I'm none of that, uh, but you can obviously go check out some videos, and the, you're gonna see, for example, you know, if if I just ask, you know, what is the meter, uh, which is the weather in uh, uh, in IAD, which is Dallas Airport. <laughs> So as you can see, uh, it gives us the coded version, but if you were a little bit smarter in your query and you wanted the, the decoded version, you could have said from the get-go in plain English and it would give you uh, the results in plain English. So you could have only asked one time instead of paying twice the tokens. You can get smarter in how you ask questions. And of course, you can also uh, be more precise and you can also ask it uh, to speak in different uh, voices. You could say, as a lawyer, for example, when I ask uh, Sage to write the terms and condition of this application here, which was written by Sage, uh, at first I forgot to tell it to speak as a professional lawyer, so the, the terms were not perfect. But then I say it again and say, as a professional lawyer, do this. Now uh, it was perfect uh, legal jargon, so uh, keep that in mind. And here, as you can see, now the meter is translated into plain English, so you don't need to un understand all the encodings of the meters, uh, and you can just read it. Now, like we talked about, on the left side here, you can create chats, and it's going to keep the history. So if you want to talk about uh, different topics, we always recommend that you switch to a new um, chat box, so that way it's not going to confuse the bot. So if I'm going to write uh, Python code uh, to say, hello world, uh, obviously, I want this on your new tab uh, from my meet all uh, weather question. That's going to just confuse the bot. So it's just better to start uh, a new uh, a new uh, chat here. And of course, you can copy the code just by clicking copy here. All right. So here also, you're going to see that you can uh, edit your account here and uh, uh, see your name and all that. But here, what's important here is you're going to see what data sets you have access to. So it could be, you know, the acquisition.gov data set, Air Force BIOS, DoD BIOS, DoD uh, 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 content, and uh, uh, what we call um, regulations. Uh, learn with Nick content in the nick of time content and videos, uh, all the Platform One content and uh, my website. And, and all that stuff, and the NIST CVs. Um, and you're going to see your, your custom uh, data set here, which uh, is uh, unique to you based on your uh, user ID and uh, other content that we have. And we augment the GPT existing content. Of course, we don't replace it. Um, so it's on top of, of that. So of course, we have additional uh, data sets. Uh, or we can also ingest your data set and make it only visible to you and your colleagues so no one else will be able to see that. All right, so like you've seen here on this Metal chat, uh, what we've did here is pretty uh, unique. We detected the word Metal and we created the FAA weather API to be able to get uh, the Metal in real time. So there's 
here are kind of two use cases, right? We can tap into uh, the memory of Sage, and that's how we ingest content, PDFs and text content, all that good stuff. But we can also tap into real-time API. So if you have an API that could bring additional insight to Sage to be able to, to provide a better answer, uh, obviously we can tap into that. That's a custom uh, work for higher use case, but we do that here in this use case, we're building a go no go decision uh, for flying. So uh, this is just a meetup, but we're gonna do the same for icing and all the, the different criteria, all the way to the uh, pilot personas, uh, um, and with the minimums of the pilot and also the uh, aircraft. So we're going to be able to tap into all these APIs and databases and, and effectively have a decision tree to come up to, uh, to an answer. So like I said, if uh, you have a custom use case of uh, uh, either uh, a real-time API you have to tap into or you want us to ingest your custom data, you can reach out to us uh, at info at asksage.ai. We'll be able to uh, tell you exactly uh, how we can do this. Of course, we need to know kind of the data formats, uh, the volume, so we can kind of estimate uh, the cost of the, the tokens and we can ingest that for you. All right, so I wanted to share with you a couple of thoughts here. I thought you would find it interesting. You know, to show you kind of the diverse options, right, when it comes to using Sage, of course, you've seen the ability to pull weather and ask questions and write text and write LinkedIn posts and stuff. But for me, when I started, I first uh, taught it all my uh, videos, right? And then it started to create my video scripts for me, and I'm just a pretty face reading the scripts to you. Uh, but the other thing we've done is uh, the logo here and the two uh, uh, mascots, the Owl Al and the Sage, all created by Dal E from uh, OpenAI. Uh, so that shows you kind of the, the diversity there. And then, of course, all the UI, I would say 90% of the UI of the, the website and uh, the uh, chat and the back end of the chat and uh, probably 100% of the SQL uh, Postgres of the chat was also uh, created by GPT as well, just by asking questions. And it's, it's kind of being an orchestrator, right, and, and telling it what to do, of course, and, and step by step and copy and paste and trying and fixing a little bit, right? It's never perfect, but I, I can tell you, it did 90% of the job, so one developer can really end up like being 10. The other thing we did is we uh, took the uh, terms and conditions we wanted. We had a couple of insights. Of course, I created 12 companies, so I know what we need. So instead of going to a lawyer, we went to Sage and asked it to write our terms and conditions and it did the job for us as a first draft that was easy and quick. And in two minutes, I had what I would usually wait for for probably a week. All right, so when it comes to use cases, of course, there's so many uh, different options. You can take a look at some of the, the examples we have on the website. Uh, obviously, we can ingest data. We can tap to real-time APIs. You can ask questions. You, you can write content. You can translate. You can copy and paste a JSON in Chinese, and it's going to translate all that to English and summarize what it sees. It's pretty mind-boggling, again, what you can do. Um, and, uh, of course, all the summarization and translation and sentiment analysis and Q&A and all that stuff. But keep in mind, we need to teach it what it doesn't know. So it doesn't know recent news. It doesn't know what happened after the last ingest from OpenAI uh, in 2021. So uh, make sure that if you want uh, any, any additional content that you reach out to us, we can then uh, put it into the system and our uh, database. So then uh, Sage will be aware of these uh, recent uh, uh, events and, and data. With that, hopefully you're excited and uh, you want to be part of this uh, team with us. Join us on the Discord. The link is right here. And come chat with us. If you want to send us an email, uh, shoot us an email at info at assage.ai. We'll be able to uh, try to look into your custom use case. We have uh, 410 teams now, I believe, on the platform. So very excited uh, to see such a momentum. Our goal is to help as many people as we can. We're going to do our best. But, you know, if you have some funding and you're excited to get things done, uh, reach out to us and let us know so we can prioritize your use case. Of course, um, we're going to do another video to really give you more insights on the limitations and how we can ingest data and kind of things to pay attention to.